Hey guys, it's Hunter. Welcome back to another episode of Boxes in the Kitchen. Essentially a guitar haul unboxing video because it's one of the most fun parts of being a guitar YouTuber that I like to share with you guys. The kitchen is the only place in this small ass apartment I have room to put boxes at this point. And I do have a quick favor to ask before we get into it. Just want to remind you if you're getting anything from Sweetwater, Toman, Reverb for the holidays, there's a ton of insane deals. My affiliate links are down below. It's a great way to support the channel. It doesn't cost you anything extra. I get a little kickback to invest back into the channel. But in the meantime, let's see what's going on in the kitchen. All right, first box. Relatively small pile. There's no real order this time, so I think we'll just go with the first one on the stack. Let's open it up. Ah, uh, hell yeah. I love it. I saw one comment on the last unboxing video. He's like, dude, I can't believe you get more excited for the budget guitars than for the expensive ones. Andrew's just always rubbing it in, man. I get it. I don't practice enough. Damn. But honestly, man, I mean, look at it. Look at this metallic finish. This is out of Squire's new Affinity series, and these have been actually surprisingly difficult to get a hold of. So I'm going to go ahead and guess that a lot of you started with Squire Affinities, or at least your first guitar was some sort of Squire. Mine was a Squire Bullet. And so these have like a really special place in a lot of guitars heart, mine included. For 2021, they've updated it, they've made a couple of spec changes, and they've also added this Telecaster Deluxe. Hardtail, dual humbuckers, let's go. So one of the things I'm noticing is unlike most budget guitars, they've actually rounded the fingerboard out here. On a lot of other really affordable guitars, it's just corners. This looks a hell of a lot better. And also look at this, like look how tight the net pocket is. Gloss headstock as well. I'm not sure if they did that on any of the older affinities. My only experience with affinities was playing them in Guitar Center a long time ago and also the Hello Kitty, which is based on the affinity platform. And the Hello Kitty definitely does not have a gloss fingerboard, which looks quite nice. I gotta say, fingerboard edges, I mean, they haven't been highly rolled like you'd find on higher end fenders, but you can see they've actually done a little bit of rounding. Like they're not super uh, like cornery like you'd find on the older budget guitars. This is much more comfortable and uh, fret edges are good too. This is a really nice looking piece of wood, actually. Usually I, I'm not a huge fan of Palferro, but look at the figuring and the streaking on this piece. Old school witch hats too, love that. Here it is from the back, so it's string through. This is one of those little things that I really appreciate by the way, like they've actually engraved the logo into the neck plate. Even a lot of Fenders don't do that. Like my Fender Player Series is just a blank neck plate. There's something about this that's just really nice. I don't know. Satin neck, it feels really thin. The finish, I mean, not the profile. It feels like your standard modern C. Standard affordable tuning keys. And uh, oh, they've also rounded the headstock shape a little bit here. It feels like they've rolled or sanded this a little bit. Feels quite nice, actually. I don't know if they did that in the old ones. It's definitely, again, not on the Hello Kitty. I think this is one of the coolest things that guitar makers are starting to put on their budget guitars. Because not only does it look cool, but it also makes for a much more enticing mod project platform. As in, you might actually want to buy this just for the modding potential. Because the neck's good, the body looks awesome. And don't get me wrong, I'm definitely excited to see how it is and play stock. As I said, these really affordable Squires, I have a special place in my heart for them. But I mean, there is absolutely no way that a pair of EMGs or Fishman Fluids is going into this thing. You know, this thing is already given off a ton of Wage War vibes. May as well do the full upgrade thing and see how it sounds like in drop A. Honestly, it's kind of nuts how excited I've been to try this guitar. It's been really difficult to get a hold of, so massive thanks to Fender for sending it over. Love it. Okay, we have to move on now. Next box. I have been super excited to get this in. And I know a lot of you have been waiting for me to do something about my shitty power too. So let's open this box up ASAP. my god, you guys have no idea how excited I am for this. It looks really boring, kind of like an AV receiver or a VCR or something, but this is probably 
one of the most exciting pieces of studio gear I've gotten in a long, long time. So this is a Furman PL Plus C power conditioner. A lot of you guys have noticed and have commented like, hey, why is there so much noise when you're doing the isolated sound demos and stuff? Well, it's because my power is shit, all right? It acts as a radio antenna, so a lot of that noise, not only is it 60 cycle hum, but also if I turn the volume up, it's conservative AM radio. So fun fact about all the demo tracks, it's actually subliminal messaging about conspiracy theories and Jesus. <laughs> anyway, so I was talking to my friend Andrew Bannon, and he's like, you know, you can just get a power conditioner. And I was like, you can do a what? Guys, I, I don't know shit about shit, okay? I'm just a dude that enjoys playing with a lot of guitars, and by sheer dumb luck, I have a YouTube channel. So this brand, Furman, is apparently the industry leader in power conditioners, so it should sort out all the power problems that I've been having. We've got surge protection, we've got noise filtration, we've got voltage protection, we got pull out lights, extreme voltage shutdown. Listen, I just wanted to stop hearing how 9-11 was an inside job for my studio monitors. We've got a voltage meter, that looks very cool. So as you can see, we're a bit over 120 right now. And what did these do? Hmm, kind of look like the knobs you find on AV receivers. Oh, okay. Uh. Oh, okay, I get it. So it's like when you put it into a, a studio rack, you can you can see shit. Brighter, less bright, cool. <laughs> All right, and then on the back, plenty of outlets for all my studio gear. So this should sort out all my power problems. You guys have no idea how much the noise has been driving me insane. Now, they have cheaper ones. The reason I went with this is because apparently the linear filtering technology is really good. Like, I even know what that means. I was just sick of hearing the shit coming out of my monitors. And also, uh, I just checked the pricing. They're usually $330. First thing, I got this used on eBay for $180. And, I mean, it seems basically brand new. But also, apparently, they're doing a huge sale at Sweetwater right now, so you can get these for for $199 new. If you're having 60 cycle hum issues or you know power fluctuations, uh, definitely, definitely look into getting one of these. All right, so as you can hear, uh, this is what happens when I've got no noise gate on currently because my power is a piece of shit. I don't know if you can hear this right now, but there's some angry people complaining about Obamacare or whatever. <laughs> Anyways, right now I have to have like my noise gate like really high up. Um, and obviously when you play guitar, it disengages the noise gate, and so we're back to this. It's especially bad when I disengage the ground. Like, holy fucking shit. Turn the noise gate back the fuck on. <laughs> Everything is now plugged into the power conditioner, and... There we go. Silence never sounded so good. So that should clean up a lot of the sound clip samples for upcoming demos, and uh, yeah, I'm excited about that, because you guys will stop bitching about it. <laughs> Usually I like work with what you got solutions, but in this particular case, there was no solution but to throw money at <laughs> the problem. Doing these unboxing videos is always fun. It's always a mystery. Speaking of mysteries though, just a reminder for how much we use the internet for everything, emails, banking, buying guitars. You wanna make sure all that information continues to be a mystery and doesn't fall into the wrong hands. And that is where today's sponsor NordVPN comes in. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the VPN, essentially the simplified version is it encrypts and hides your online data from prying eyes. So, especially if you're working remote at a coffee shop, traveling for the holidays, using any of those free hotspots, without a VPN, someone could be monitoring what you're doing. Personally, getting my card information stolen once was more than enough for me. I don't take any chances with my security. I use NordVPN all the time. They have super fast servers from all over the world. So with one click, you can hide your information from bad actors and even make it seem like you're in a completely different country. So you know, when YouTube tells you that video isn't available in your region or Netflix tells you that movie isn't available in your country, yeah, forget any of that. So if you're ready to secure your online data, head on over to nordvpn.com slash Agafish and use the promo code Agafish because for you guys, they've got a special deal. Right now, sign up for a two-year plan and get an additional month free that works out to like three bucks a month, which compared to getting your information stolen is an absolute no-brainer. So that's nordvpn.com slash Agafish, promo code Agafish. Be safe online, protect your information. It's really important. And of course, clicking the link does support the channel. Now let's see what else we've got in the kitchen. All right, next box. Let's go with this big one in the back here.
Oh, shit. Okay. I literally have no idea what this is. I mean, obviously it's a Schecter, but other than that, I've never seen this model before. I guess it's from their Sun Valley Super Shredder series. Those are more traditional Super Strats to what Schecter is generally known for. More traditional than the 2000s Metalcore Abalone Everywhere C models, whatever they're called. I am really liking that. It's got kind of like an upgraded barn caster vibe. Plastic's been brushed. It feels really good. I have no idea if these are stainless steel frets or not. They feel like it. I love these dot mirror inlays in the ebony fingerboard though. They're the same ones as in my Keith Marrow 7 string. They look so good. 24 frets, spoke wheel truss rod adjustment. Are these EMG retroactives? No, they don't have the logo. Hip shot IB bridge or IB bridge, however you want to call it. Yeah, that's a chunk of ball. Aged plastics too, that's a nice touch. What is this wood though? Is this black limba maybe? All right, you know what? I've decided that I need to look up what this is because I'm just guessing at this point. <laughs> Okay, we're back and I've got the details. So this is a Schecter Sun Valley Super Shredder Exotic. And the reason it's exotic is because, as I'd guessed, this body is made of black limba. And if you aren't too familiar with black limba, maybe you might know white limba, also known as Karina. You know the Karina Flying Vs that Gibson sells for a ton of money because it's a super hard wood and very difficult to work with? This is the same wood, except uh, it's a darker color and it's got these streaks and stuff in it, so it's black limba instead of white limba. At least that's how I've been led to believe. Uh, feel free to correct me in the comments. Our Schecter USA pickups. Got a Pasadena in the neck and a sunset strip in the bridge. Flip it to the back, holy sh That's an even better view of the black limba. Again, it reminds me of a upgraded barn caster. Like antique reclaimed wood, I love this. Schecter locking tuners and that is a Wenge neck. I love the feel of satin Wenge necks, like the open pores are so exaggerated on Wenge. And look at those streaks and figuring, I love it. Made in South Korea, and this guitar retails for $11.99, which is not bad at all for a Wenge neck, stainless steel frets, ebony fingerboard, black limba body, hip shot hardware, Schecter USA pickups. That is very, very competitive with other hot rotted super strats. It also comes in different colors too, if you think this looks too much like a picnic table, <laughs> whatever. Schecter is kind of one of the funnier companies to work with because they don't even tell you if anything's on the way. It just kind of shows up. <laughs> I really appreciate that. I love how chill they are. And that looks super cool. It looks like it's been hit by lightning or something. One last look at the Schecter Sun Valley Super Shredder exotic with a black Limba body. Generally, Super Shredders don't really do anything for me even aesthetically, but this one is very, very cool, and I think it's the rustic vibes that are getting to me. Really appreciate Schecter, and thanks to the patrons, I've been expanding the video editing team, so hopefully I'll be able to get a demo out to you guys very soon. All right, last box for this episode. We'll save the other ones for next week. You know what? I know exactly what this is. I've been looking forward to this for about a year now, uh, so let's open it up and see what's inside. <laughs> Look at that! Ah, oh, it's so cool! So about a year ago, I visited Asheville, and while I was there, I checked out Illuminati guitars. Not gonna lie, the name is a huge reason why I went to go visit them. I'm a sucker for puns. And Illuminati, as the name suggests, this neck, this nut, all of this is made of aluminum. Jumbo stainless steel frets as well. Spurzel locking tuners. That's insane. It looks so bizarre when you're used to looking at wooden guitar necks. That's cool. They've engraved the cereal too. I'm not gonna lie to you, the leaves are falling. We're in the middle of November. It does feel a little cold at first to the touch, but it's not like shocking or anything. It looks so like 50s sci-fi, I love it. So Illuminati make their necks to fit on any standard fender. Now this particular one is not going on a fender, but I thought I would point that out in case any of you are looking to pick up an aluminum neck. What's really cool about their design compared to others is that it's not super heavy. So they've done a lot of resonance tests and they figured out how to chamber it in just the right way so you don't lose any uh, resonance, you don't lose any tone. You still get all the benefits of an aluminum neck without it being, uh, you know, a workout to play your guitar. They're all made in the USA, in Asheville. A little goodie bag, it's got the tag and everything. It's got the tools, it's got the drill bit. 
that you'd need the screws, custom guitar pick too. What do you think of it, Pringle? James, the owner, is a super cool dude. Hunter, thank you for your patience. We've been slammed for some time with all the supply chain issues and people getting sick. I uh, hope everybody's okay. This has been a very trying time. Can't wait to see this built up. This is the last of the next that mount the M5, so you might have to drill mounting holes a little. We've switched to M4, so please mention that. Okay, job's done. No more mods on bodies. Just mount and play. All the best, James and the crew. That's so nice. This is actually going on a very 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 special build we still need to get the cad design done and get it down to a cnc machine but holy shit, if everything goes to plan this is gonna be such such a special guitar and you can leave your guesses down in the comments but i guarantee you whatever you think it is it's better than that or at least different <laughs> i shouldn't say better i shouldn't overhype it under promise over deliver never mind it's gonna be shit. don't even worry about it <laughs> no it is gonna be cool anyways um, yeah, really appreciate them sending over the snack. So that will do it for this episode of Boxes in the Kitchen. I love giving you guys a little behind the scenes look into what demos, what videos are coming up. Again, some huge changes. The next evolution of the channel is imminent. So I really appreciate everyone that's liked the videos, that's subscribed, that's hit the bell for notifications. Everyone who's joined the Discord server, who's used the affiliate links, who supports on Patreon, like Boosted Cajun. Oh, and of course, everyone that's bought merch, running a little discount right now to get rid of uh, all the remaining stock as there will be a new Pringle drop soon. But every single person that's ever interacted with the channel in any way has helped it reach this point. And for that, I am incredibly thankful. So as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been awesome and I will see you for the next video.